We're at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff this afternoon for the 2008 Heineken Cup final between the 2006 champions Munster and the most successful side in the history of the competition, three-time winners to lose. Our match presentation team this afternoon includes former Welsh captain and Heineken Cup winner with Bath, Jan Evans. He provides the technical analysis down on the front line. And our match commentators, Stuart Barnes and Miles Harrison. Miles, all yours. Thank you, Simon. Five o'clock, fast approaching, kick-off time. Is that good afternoon, good evening? Not quite sure, but with the roof on, we're on rugby time. It doesn't really matter, does it? And here we are, we've waited 13 years for this particular final. The two most consistently competitive teams in European rugby. Yeah, officially ranked the top two teams in Europe. Nobody can doubt the achievements on the field this season mean that Munster and Toulouse are the top two sides. At pool stages, Munster have accounted not only for was last year's European champions and finalists in England next week, but also Clement Oliver, top of the French 14. As for Toulouse, the other English finalists of next week, Leicester, have been put out, as well as the recently crowned Magnus champions, Leicester. The cream has risen in European rugby. It is here in Cardiff. Munster in blue today, but they won the towing cost for the dressing room. They chose North. Now the away dressing room here, but the one used by Munster in 2006. And the man who's taken Munster to four finals, Declan Kidney, has gone with the same pack, bar one, to that which played in the final two years ago. The front row, Marcus Horan and John Hayes, a fourth final for Hayes today too. And hooker, Jerry Flannery, that's as you were then, in 2006. So too in the second row, where Donald Crow Callahan, an ever-present in the season, Munster won the trophy, and again this campaign. Captain this time is Paul O'Connell, well and truly back after his injury problems during the pool stages. Alan Quinlan, the man who missed out on the start against Munster, but in today from the beginning with David Wallace and Dennis Leamy in a back row, minus Anthony Foley these days. The man of the match in 2006, Peter Stringer, has been left out for Tommaso Leary. Fly half Ronan O'Gara, the all-time leading point scorer in this competition. Then the men who've come from New Zealand and proved to be a perfect fit. Centres Lefemi Mafi and Rua Tapoki. And winger Doug Howlett, who seeks today to add a European Cup to a Super Rugby title. Australian Rod Kafer, the only other man to have done that. The other winger, Ian Dowling, on the way to senior status these days. And fullback Dennis Hurley in his first European season. For Munster, a third European final at this ground. For Toulouse, the first time that they've played here, although they won the Cup in the old National Stadium. Guino Vez was in charge then. And 12 years on, he has picked this team. South African Dan Human and Salvatore Perugini of Italy, the props. Hooker is William Savat, who scored in the semi-final against London Irish. The captain, Fabian Palouse, seeking to lift this trophy for a third time. Patricio Albacetti, Argentina's World Cup lock, is alongside. The back row is Jean Bouillot, like Palouse, appearing in a fourth final. Thierry Dussetois, a French hero on this ground in the World Cup, and a Beeritz sub here against Munster in 06. And number eight, Sean Sowerby, a runner-up in 2005 for Stade Francais against Toulouse. The halfbacks, Byron Kelleher, the All Black, and Jean-Baptiste Elissar, both back to the scene of their World Cup confrontation. Maleli Konovore returns at centre to partner Yannick Josion. The Fijian missed the semi-final and is preferred to Florian Fritz, who is just returning after a longer layoff. The wingers, speed and vigour in Yves Dongi and Maxime Medar in the absence of Vincent Clerc. And with no Clement Poitrineau, Cedric Haymans is full-back. And in the Cup Final 22, for the fifth time, it all began for teenager Haymans in 1997 for Breve against Leicester in Cardiff. The replacements, Munster have included 20-year-old Keith Earls, 
with Barry Murphy unavailable injured. No place then in the 22 for the captain in 2006, Anthony Foley. For Toulouse, a late call on Valentin Courant, he's out. Gregory Lambelet in, so it's five forwards and two backs, including Fritz coming back from a broken leg. Well, at home in Munster, there has been a paint the province red campaign, but I don't think people needed much persuading. The teams about to make their walk into another piece of Heineken Cup history. They stand and wait to be heroes and villains as yet unknown. But the story right now is the noise, the colour we're about to experience. It's time to let you soak up both Munster versus Toulouse at the Millennium Stadium for the right to be called Champions of Europe. So Munster, after a year off, back on the money, back where they always were, challenging for the title, making those whom they play fully aware that they will have to be at their very best if they are to rip Munster's prize from their grasp. And you sense Munster are going to have to be better than they were when they won that epic encounter two years ago. Paul O'Connell struggled in the line out then. He's going to have to pour it on against Albacete. Beeritz were good, to lose a better. David Wallace and his Munster men know it will possibly be the afternoon of their lives if they're going to beat to lose. It's that big a challenge. The European Cup final referee is for the first time 36-year-old Nigel Owens from Wales, so a very special day for him. He's supported by touch judges Nigel Whitehouse and Hugh Watkins. Television match official Derek Bevan, who refereed the 97 final that breathed Leicester game at the Old Arms Park, and the mention of Leicester in the European final in Cardiff might still bring some Munster supporters out in a cold sweat, but this is now a much happier place. A place where demons were exercised, and now it feels like a second home. Like it did against Biarritz. Will it be a second trophy? Falls for to lose from the kickoff. In went Quinlan. Munster ball now. O'Gara. Sowerby. That's the halfway line. Stay out, Blue. Kelleher. It was a shaky pass, well picked up by Elisal. Quinlan in there again. Away, Denied Blue. the start Away, before, he certainly started today. Back. Kelleher. Looks for Elisard again, little jink, tries to find the gap. Went for the offload, ball's loose, Kelleher. Sowerby, Albacete, good tackle from O'Connell. And the penalty was coming, Kelleher knew that. A decent start for Toulouse, and it's very important, I think, that their main men really perform today. Josion in the semi-final at London Irish was a little bit off his game, but there you can see he chases up the kick of Ellis Alder does really well. Keller under pressure from O'Leary, but what's telling there is a very good pickup at fly half from Ellis Alder. Keller knows it's not the greatest start for him, but Ellis Alder's made it easy. And Ellis Alder, Gira, of course, is going to be such a big battle today. Heyman's towards touch and not finding it. Touched by a Munster hand, though. Scrum That's a scrum and five, it will be a scrum five, yes. Well, you win. you win either way, really, if you're to lose, because their line-out is really powerful. It put Nick Kennedy and Irish under pressure, and their scrum just as good. John Hayes and Horan, their moment of truth against Toulouse. There you can see O'Leary does well to keep it out, but he can't control it. And I think Munster... Well, Dennis Hurley forgot the importance there. O'Leary and Hurley, the two youngsters, 
Yeah, and Hurley did really well against Gloucester, but this is a world he's never been in, and just a little bit mentally higher. fragile there. Heineken Cup debut was that quarter-final at King's home. Sean Payne, the team manager, had been doing the work in the pool. Nothing is going to budge there. Through the legs by Salby, and quickly off the wing is made up. Roll away, Blue! Oh, 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 In the away. shadow of the posts. Out, stay out! Kelleher, Elisard, Palouse looking all around for support. It could have been out vital away, support Blue. as well. Trying to fracture this monster defence early on. Three out, minutes out, when they conceded out, against out. Biarritz, if you remember. Sorelli Bomba down this touchline. He's going back towards Elisard for a drop goal. No, it's a dummy. And it's to this touchline with Heymans. It's ferocious tackling, though, from Munster. Well, Munster do defend brilliantly, and Elisard is going to make them tackle. He started with great variety at 10. Josian standing at fly half for this move. So that is short if required. Palouse coming with him. Yeah, they're going short with the hooker and the captain. Another penalty, says Nigel Owens. Just a bit too move. eager there at the breakdown, Munster. Done the tackle. Move. Munster being forced to defend there. Most impressive start from Ellis Now, Munster talking back to Nigel Owens. So Toulouse are within five. Is the scrum a tantalising off? Uh, decision I think Elisard will want three points Lemie and Topoki were the men around the referee something said Elisard is going for the kick at the post will go to the front line for the first time and it's Yian Evans oh, Miles, yeah we talked about to losing an offload again isn't it Elisard he's desperate across the game and looking for the offload that time Bui on his shoulder but who's there O'Callaghan and Flannery a double tackle prevents the offload prevents him crossing that game line that's what Munster have to be really careful of, make no, the no, double hits, all prevent the off of the early stages, undoubtedly Ellis Ald. And here is that man. First clear chance, but not the first points. Another match in the quarter-final against the Blues. And here in Cardiff, nothing as yet. Downing thinking about the quick one, gives it to O'Gara, who calms it down. And we said before this could be a game that's a matter of inches, and that first kick misses the post by inches. Ellis out on his day, such a fine kicker. So is this man, O'Gara, and that's a blow for Toulouse missing that one. Kelleher, oh, it's given it to Quinlan. Quinlan's going to need support. Takes on Sowerby. Back goes Elisard. O'Leary, this is great ball for Munster. O'Gara swings it into midfield. To Pokey on to Maffey. Maffey's going straight. There was a hint of space there. Didn't last for long, though, did it? O'Leary, O'Gara. Right on the line, that pass from O'Gara. Dowling. Back. Tommaso Leary to howl it, gets his hands on the ball now. Marcus Horan. O'Gara. It's very cluttered in midfield. O'Callaghan trying to just barge on an extra couple of metres. O'Gara slipped play. here. Backwards play on. Hurley's got it, but the whistle's going to go. It's been lost forward. Forward off blue, yes? Well, Alan Quinlan, he's such an intelligent player. He's also fairly quick. Didn't start in the final two years ago. Came on at the end. And he's getting himself between Kelleher and Ellis Ald there. Very important man for Munster. There you can see the tap and Kelleher. Not switched on to the pace of the game. Maybe there's a still a demon or two from the New Zealand defeat against France in the quarter-final of the World Cup. Ronan O'Gara just looking up to see what's on. Eye off the ball, slips a little bit, and then Toulouse turn it over. Okay, lads. 
played in all four finals okay, here, with John Hayes David Wallace Peter String on the bench today he would make it four Crouch. Crouch. And Anthony Foley though to make it four for him so yeah, yeah. also very loud stats that. most points over the Touch. years Pause. he knows the importance yeah. of that first kick too missed by El Assad. he doesn't lack confidence El Assad, does he Kelleher looking for Maydar, up comes Hurley, it's a little bit shaky. Munster will need their fullback to settle, their young fullback. Yeah, nervous start from Hurley. It's interesting there, Alan Quinlan does not bind defensively on scrums. And Hurley put under pressure from Kelleher. Kelleher loves that little dart down the right flank with a boot, doesn't he? And Toulouse get an easy bit of possession. Loose with the take. Stay out. Sour beat. Wants to change that runners up medal. The winners medal today, beaten by Toulouse in Murrayfield in 05. And that man lifted the trophy. Toulouse. Good. Uh, effort done. Thank you. Long way back to Elisard. It's the Gary Owen. And it's Hurley looking to take control, but he's not taken the ball. Josion used his height well. Kunavori there as well. Elisard now going for the drop goal. He's running back to halfway. He's decided it's over. And so does Nigel Owens. Makes up for the penalty miss. Well engineered. Toulouse get the first points. Arch pragmatist there. The Toulouse crowd delighted with that. That was smart play. We talk about the flair of Toulouse. But the up and under was a good kick. The chase from Josie on not for the first time in eight minutes was excellent. Quick ball back, and it's a little stab from Elisal. He loves drop goals, he'll go for them all day. This is a final, it's not about tries, it's about points. First point to Toulouse. We start from Ronan O'Gara. The chase there from the locks. Captain leading the charge, O'Connell. Al-Assad, who started his Heineken Cup career back in 2002 as a fly half, he's far from alien to the role, is he? No, he's well aware of what he's got to do, but Paul O'Connell knows, 3-0 down, he's got a lead. He waits for the moment, the man in the Toulouse red takes the ball and O'Connell hits him with everything he's got. He's a great chaser at restart, he really is, and a, a fulcrum of this monster team today. Keith Wood used to be. Flannery now in the jersey took over from Frankie Sheehan at the start of 06, that first pool game when Sheehan was injured and hasn't looked back since. O'Leary backwards, back backwards says the referee is right in front of him and Flannery out to clean up. O'Gara down the middle. To poke he's not the tallest, in fact he's not going to even challenge there. Dongi off the wing. Constant threat against London Irish, Yves Dongi in the semi-final, little chip there from Josion, that's what he loves to do, and he's very good at it as well, Josion carries, Quinlan can't hold him, Jean Bouillot to lose, starting to get into their stride, always looking for that offload, Kelleher, little chip is from Palouse, now it's very interesting because it's in behind and Medar was chasing, but Palouse with those strong legs, put too much into that kick really it was a good idea just the execution is poor what a wonderful kick from Yannick Josion and then the other old man in the team Palouse he knows he's got a flyer in Medard but he's well he's still got a line out that puts Munster under pressure this is gorgeous from Josion chips it infield brilliant play from the center who's had a dazzling start pressure on the hooker here Flannery it's very accurate Puyo, such a good Push stealer back, at the back, line out, fine line out back. forward, but not Away enough no, no. to unsettle Paul O'Connell. Marcus Horan protecting ball and fly half. Push back. And it doesn't work its way to fly half. Normally O'Leary would have given that to O'Gara, you would have thought, but O'Leary with a confidence to take on the kick himself. Toulouse said yesterday we'll chip behind them because Munster love to rush tight. And if they rush tight, he said, we can get behind them in this area. First time, Josion tries it. It's a glorious success, and it could have amounted to so much more. It's a good start from Toulouse, there's no doubt about that. And he was captain in the early stages of the competition. And you can 
obviously had quite an impact on that final in 2005 and here he is again right on that That's game line goal. using his strength Kelleher to Elisar to Albacete this is turning now into a very impressive start from the French team don't quite have the weight of points to show for it yet De Sartois, what was it, 37 Back. tackles from him in that France-New Zealand game here. Here's Elisard, who ran the ball out at the end of that game, but he can't supply another three points here. Well, it's all well and good being pragmatic and taking the points on offer, or taking the opportunity. When you go for the three points, what you're doing is you're cutting out an option of a try, you've got to make them count. And he's got the one drop goal, but one from three. He's played very well around the park but the conversion rate of 33% is too low at the moment and that's keeping Munster well in this game and you know Munster will come back, that's inevitable and he'll come back, will never go away Lock on red. No forward, Nigel Owens on hand to spot it again this will be a Munster put into the scrum said before, a bit of a shaky start from Dennis Hurley looking at exactly what he is, a man whose first European season and European final for that these his mistakes well he's got to pick this ball up and he's frozen he's frozen there he doesn't really know what to do he takes his eye off the ball there it's a step up from anything he's experienced so far and that last clip really sums it up a young player of promise against an old player of great class of Josion and Toulouse winning the early exchanges Good work there from Leeming, the number eight. That was an easy ball to control. O'Gara to Howlett. That's the way they want to use Howlett to set it up and then rejoin. Has away, red, red. Push back, back. It's better from Hurley too. Join the line well there. O'Connell crosses halfway. O'Leary, O'Gara, flat. lovely flat pass to Quinlan and then Dowling. He's slipping. surface has had its critics before but of course with the roof on today it shouldn't be too much of a problem now it should be a decent surface Ronan O'Gara finding a lot of space there we talked about Hurley's inexperience like to look at Dongies here the 26 year old who's only just joined from Brieve again another player really stepping up levels and he actually was caught a long way in field there it's not raining out there but it is windy and because of that the decision to put the roof on the right one, but also for the atmosphere as well. Mars, we talked about Dongi, Ronan O'Gara, top of your screen, Dougie Howlett at the bottom. Just look at the space that the wing is giving him, the left wing. If O'Gara hits that one really hard and flat, maybe 10 yards forward, Dongi's got a lot of work to do there. And there's no doubt at all, Munster have looked at Toulouse's wide defence. O'Gara will go cross field. And he spent seven years at Breeze. <laughs> bumbling around in the uh, French leagues, but not making the impact that he would have wanted. Move to Toulouse and hey presto, and he can fine. Good line out take from Weir because Munster really put pressure on that. In his fourth final, Keep it up, with Josie and Toulouse. And the Toulouse side, the most experienced man at this stage, Jean Bouillot. And anger on the bench too. Here's Heymans, losing Howlett, who come blitzing forward, and that time was unable to make the tackle, but no great damage done. Fourth from Josie on Elisard, he's had to deal with some nasty ones in this first quarter of an hour. Swept it up very well, hasn't he? Showing his experience, Kelleher making Josie on stoop again. Dowling, so he'll make the call there. The wide mouth Dowling off to Hurley and then Quinlan. He'll show that strength, Alan Quinlan. O'Leary. O'Gara crossfield again. Now this will be counter attack ball. If it sits down for Dongi, it does. He's got it now. Looks for Heymans. Oh, ben Conavore. Hand comes in, bit of a slap out there from Marcus Horan. 
taken quickly by Conavori. Referee doesn't like it, but coming back. Taken in front of where the ball went out. That was exquisite from Cedric Heymans. He's back on his game. It's a little bit of a juggle from Dongi, who's better position. Heymans has absolutely no space, but watch the check, the step opens up the field. And that Munster are very lucky that that is not a penalty given against Horan there. Beautiful play, wait, step to Pokey held there, dances down the touchline. On another day, that's a penalty, but this is, isn't that fantastic from Cedric Heyman. He's got three winners' medals, he's hardly played in those games. He's an unused sub in 97, and then in uh, 2003, he didn't get on. And in 2005, he got on after 64 minutes, although there was extra time, so that helped him out that day. And he played the whole of the match against Watts in defeat in 2004, so he'll be bursting to be part the full 80 today. Well, more than that, in 2008, he did all he could just about to keep Toulouse it away from the please. final, had a horror game against That's London that. Irish, but he started very confidently. It feels like an international, it feels like a big test match, and he's a big test player. That fullback today, because Clement Poitrano went with that break, he suffered it in February. Kelleher, ball dislodged. About players who haven't made the best start, then Kelleher would fall into that category as well. Taking time to settle into this major European final. Police. That was a terrific wrestle, wasn't it? Steve Marcus. Uh, nice service that time. Elisard didn't get the whole of that, but it's still awkward ball to deal with. John Hayes having a go. Whistle's gone again. Okay, it's not deliberate. Okay, you two. Okay. Well, if you're Accident going to put a high ball, ball off your boot and get it wrong, it's better to go too high to give yourself a chance of getting back. Hurley's come an awful long way for that. I think as a young man, he should be expecting his back row forwards to take command there. There's an awful lot of number eights who will say, I will take that. And I think, you know, the likes of Dennis Leamy have got to help him out there. That was too far. Hurley went for that, full of enthusiasm. But if that ball breaks the other way, there's a whole lot of space behind him. Yeah, just had a journey around the flanks. Now, just watch Alan Quinlan on the short side here. Will he bind? No. It's out with Elisard. Canavore. Big presence in the centre, Kunavore. Toulouse trying to keep it alive, and it's just drifted forward there. And two ironic cheers there from the Munster supporters. Good decision for this run. Let's go, Munster's way. And Toulouse will put pressure on again. Munster off to what? Alan Quinlan now. He has to have the shoulder down. And this ball, ball is not going on yet, and he's off there. He's just got the hand there. And Nigel Owens has refereed Munster their last four games, and he has to start picking Quinlan up for that. Quinlan's a clever operator, though. Levy, that's the last four games in Munster's European campaign, all the way through from the end of the pool against Wasps. A deadly pool that Munster managed to get themselves out of. Andrew Toulouse weren't in a gimme, were they? Heyman's again, and then Kelleher to Elisard, lovely swift hands there. And it starts going round again, Josion feeds on to Maydar. This prodigious young talent, Maydar. Running O'Gara there, taking the hit. O'Leary will know he hasn't got his fly half here. O'Callaghan told to just charge forward. Buy a metre and open up a bit of a blind side. Give O'Gara time to get back, good play. Still not back there in the conventional fly half position. He's gone really deep. There he is now. So he's looking for the quick one again. On. Certainly playing this game with pace. Sauer beyond to Heymans. Heymans has those big legs like Palouse and like Palouse beforehand. He's used the legs to ill effect. Clumsy from Cedric Holmes. 
loves to kick a ball, he's just looking for the territory there, looking to keep the pressure on Munster, and all he's done is just release the safety valve for a moment or so. Toulouse have had the best of this first quarter, but Munster will be happy enough to be bang in the game. Alec Tucci for pushing the weights and doing the squats. Oh. There is legs coming very handy at other points. Closing the gap, but over the line. Munster stepping in, that's yeah. free kick, well called as well by Nigel Owens. from O'Leary to Flannery. O'Leary again. O'Gara. Wallace. Has away, Red! All the way across the game line there for David Wallace. To Pokey. That's his step. Tackler's move! And his strength as well. Real to Pokey stepping, oh, a real back. feature of this season's Heineken Cup. Ball is loose, it's out, and it's hard. Forward off a Toulouse player. Extremely competitive on the game line at the moment. That was a really surging tackle from Thierry Dussetoir on David Wallace there. Munster will want to just try and pick up the momentum of the game a bit at the moment. They've defended really well. We know they come back. They just want to start making a few line breaks. Give Ronan O'Gara some front foot ball. And at the moment, most of the good ball is going to Ellis Al. To Pokey hasn't got into the game with his mate Maffey as an attacking force yet. Mimi and O'Leary get it right just. Dongi does not get that right. He had a hint of that before when he juggled. And went straight through the basket as if it didn't have a bottom. But it doesn't matter in the end because once we've been penalised at the breakdown, Great attempt there to stay on the feet. And Jones didn't appreciate it, certainly. Tactically, this is quite interesting. Dennis Hurley looks a little bit nervous for Munster. Dongi looks very nervous. You said it, he fumbled the first very easy ball. He didn't get near making a clean catch there. Positionally, he's been out of place. So even though to lose at the moment, have the momentum and have the force with them, Ronan O'Gara will quietly be thinking, I've identified one or two weaknesses defensively in Toulouse. Momentum and force, but as yet not really the points. It's all that matters in finals. So that throws, not his best, the direction from Lini. O'Gara to Pokey. Maffey just having to stop on that pass, not where he really wanted it, but he's very strong, like to Pokey, his centre partner. And it was never going to be taken off him. O'Gara down the middle. And Heyman's to play it, and now we'll see the big left boot inside his 22. This can go as far as you like, and it goes a very long way. It's a sweeter strike, as you will see. That is a fine kick from Cedric Heyman, and for a man whose form has just dipped after an imperious domestic season. He'll be delighted after that slice kick to really catch that one as well as he did there. And that just drives Munster back after Toulouse have lost a line out on their own throw. He does possess the biggest club in the bag, doesn't he, Haymans? Yeah, there's not much subtlety, though. He's not too good around the greens, but he can fire it a long way. Yeah, can go into the trees. His Flannery throwing long and throwing long. With the choke, he's trapped, but he won't mind because he's being driven forward here. And with only three forwards to score a try in the Hampton Cup final. And Wallace will go back to the defeat at Twickenham in 2000 against Northampton for his try. Flannery could surge from him. And from the crowd as well as Flannery broke away and wants to get their reward of a penalty. I think Flannery might have been hurt there. Call immediately for the physio and trainer. And they're running on as quickly as they can. That was extremely impressive from Munster. That's probably the best piece of play they've put together yet. Because the drive was tight. They mauled this really well and then Flannery came off very hard. And Kelleher goes up there. Can't see yet. 
where the blow comes. Oh, it's his own man, he's caught him with a right boot. You can't see quite who that is from there. Nothing foul play about that, it's a monster man trying to secure, trying to bridge his man. Oof, straight in on the head. And on the ankle as well. Top and tail of Flannery, but he's made a tough stuff, this boy. Just getting back somewhere near his rampaging best. After that injury, Miles, when he played so well in the Heineken Cup winning year, he lost his way a little bit. He is now looking very much the best hooker in Ireland, and again, a big Lions contender for next year. I was going to say, imagine him and Geek wanting uh, Joe Fenner's mobile number. And he would have come, but that was all in the future. We're going to have to wait a little while for this lineup because Jerry Flannery is having a, a sartorial makeup. Just getting the bandaging on his head. Looks a little bit shell shocked at the moment. Well, he ban himself early in the competition, didn't he? And he's going to mix it. So back in Limerick, O'Connell Street, the scenes. Hello. The atmosphere there, I wouldn't imagine that they're quaffing Gatorade and isotonic drinks in Toulouse either. Oh, there you go, there's a glass going down there too. And they see themselves. Only a class two capital. Flannery back with us and throwing to a corner that's good quick. Tap of the line out there, quickly out from Leamy onto O'Gara. This is looking very good indeed. Maffi, and for the first time, Munster burst into life inside that Toulouse 22. The fans have had to be patient. O'Leary to Howlett, O'Connell. Now it's Munster who can see the post. Howlett, even for Dougie Howlett, too much to do on that occasion. The player to lose his footing as well. Come back, 12. Good. And he's going to go short here. We'll tackle up. O'Connell sets it back to O'Leary. Flannery now in the bandage. O'Leary again. O'Gara. Horan scored his tries in this competition. They've been out wide. Time in the tight. Here's Maffey. Organised as always, the Toulouse defence. They're not just fancy downs. Quinlan. Hands away, Red! Red Williams having a good look there at Toulouse, just in case they illegally try to slow it down. They don't. Oh, and being stood up there and lifted up by Kelleher. O'Leary out to Topoki. Half break. Josion gets his man. Back. These are the moments in such tight games. This is much better from Munster. Topoki for the first time he got moving. It's still slow ball, but Quinlan and Co are starting to generate pace. Horan as well. First sustained pressure from Munster. O'Leary takes a little bit of a breather. Flannery again. Connell, you wonder if Munster is starting to think of a drop goal here. And O'Gara in no position for that. He is going for the boot. Dowling came down. Was he tripped? No <laughs> says the referee, but he has given Munster the point of the scrum for the knock forward from Havens. He certainly went sprawling, Dowling. Wasn't too sure. Need to see that one again. Havens just struggling again. There's Dougie Howlett. Making sure there's a decent contact, a nervous start from the World Cup full-back. You know, we've talked about Hurley making a couple of soft errors. That's a few now from Cedric Haynes, and such a poor semi-final, such a class player. But O'Gara will probe that area, Dongi and Haynes at the moment. Mimi, O'Leary, 
had to get that one away quickly and did. Here comes Howlett from Agora's pass. Howlett starting to test. Hurley, good strength, young man right in the game now. Wallace. Where's that ball? Can the blue shirts find it? They can. So close to the line, as close as that. And Nigel Owen says we'll have a scrum. And that's not a bad result for now for Munster. I just think when Munster can get some quick ball, you know, they're finding space in the Toulouse midfield. Toulouse are not really coming up that hard and fast and pressing. And the threat they're allowing the likes of Doug Howlett to run into corridors. And if you keep letting the likes of Howlett run into holes like that, you're going to get hurt in the end. It's enabling Hurley and Co. to start going forward. The best try scoring position of the match so far, and it belongs to Munster. This is where Munster need to plug in the power pack again. Time to go for the squeeze. Wallace. Leamy looking for it. Foraging on the floor. O'Callaghan. Another drive. Hayes is there, Wallace, Leamy. Stay back! Little dummy from Leamy, little stretch from Leamy! Oh, Dennis Leamy! I'm not gonna guess that! Has he got the first one? That's what it's here Has he there. scored on the day in the season that matters Time most? Out. Derek, can you hear me? Over to Derek Bevan. Tell me Dennis Leamy yes looks absolutely please. certain that he's just got the tip of the ball down. He's in control there. And no, he has not. Well, to me, he's lost control. <laughs> and it's side of Moses out. He's still in contact with the ball as it touches is the it? turf. Is it? I think. <laughs> <laughs> Rather you than me, Derek. I don't think it is. I don't. I'm glad I'm here, not a How can you give that? How can you give that? Huh? Unless you're certain. <laughs> it slips out of his hand. There. It's gone. His right hand has not got that ball. Well, the goodness knows how many uh, I'm here, fans not in the stadium who are giving it, looking at the uh, it's gone. television oh, replay. Yes. The only man that matters, as you say, is Derek Bevan. Vastly experienced international referee when he was in the middle. Now he's looking at a television screen and about to tell Nigel Owens whether Dennis Levy has scored or yes, not. Yes, Derek. Okay. Unconclusive. Gone forward. Scrum five. Bending ball. Crowd look like it. I think Derek Bevan has been absolutely correct in that call there it looked to me like the ball definitely slipped away from Leamy's hand and how could Derek Bevan give that when in such a tight game there was nothing conclusive about it that's a big chance because Leamy should have scored that shouldn't he old phrase isn't it too much doubt touch. especially oh, in a day like minutes. this big scrum big reply Leamy's back in again Look at Quinlan's reaction with Kelleher. John Hero takes Quinlan away, so does referee Owens. Uh, that, that's a flashpoint, and it's classic monster, isn't it? They feel they've been robbed, they're using the anger against their opponents, they've struggled in the scrum, and suddenly they've found the fury in a really good scrum. Another strong drive there, Salvi in all kinds of trouble. At the very least, Munster are going to get a put in. We maybe reenact the moment, we're not quite. Get the try this time. Well done, the monster scrum. It's not just about technique, it's just not just about scrummaging, it is heart and soul as well. We know Munster are a clever team, we also know that they are a very proud and passionate team. And that was controlled fury there from the Irish provincial team. Brilliant forward play. Trying to withstand this. 
Hume and Savat and Perugini in that Toulouse front row. Touch! Pause! Engage! Clean on the force. Here goes Limi. O'Connell with the spade trying to dig it out of there. Dowling's gone into play at scrum half. Back! Okay, are moving Blue around, on. trying to keep the Toulouse defence thinking, keep them honest. Let's get it out, lads! Warning comes from the referee, wanted that to be played. Can anybody find a way? O'Connell might be the man! Away, lads, and move! Oh, oh. Wallace in there, O'Leary too. Push back, It's Leamy who's arrived. Get back! Back! O'Connell was so close. And still is. Watch the rock on for me, boys. Watch behind, yeah? Hurley the fullback with him. Line. It's clear what Munster want to do here. That's commit everybody to this moment to score! doubt about that one in Limerick or Cardiff I think it's Leamy that's how to make up for it well it was so important for Munster to come away from this concerted period of pressure with something because had they gone backwards gone in at half time 3-0 down there would have been some gremlins even in Munster's head but that now is Monster's way of saying, OK, Toulouse, you had the, four, the first quarter. The second quarter is belonging to us, and we have the first try. That will be a shot of adrenaline for Monster. And Rodan O'Gara with the inevitable two points. is what it's all about on this game. It's great work from Paul O'Connell there and Quinlan. The two guys on the right-hand side, like a phalanx, protecting Leamy. Look at Quinlan there. It stops Josion getting in, it stops Sowerby getting there, and it means Leamy can touch down safely this time. Fascinating spell now, up until the interval. How will Toulouse react? How Munster possibly build? There is time. The take from Quinlan. And O'Gara, very nimble-footed to get away from the potential tackler or charge down. He's such a class act, isn't he? He is, but do you know what? I, I looked at Dongi and Heymans when they caught the ball, and Dongi wanted to go quick, but Heymans is about a metre from him. They're both in touch. To lose his fast counter-attacking game, can't oh, get going, like because both yeah. men were chasing O'Gara's ball. The Toulouse back three at the moment is not a harmonious camp, and O'Gara's kicking game can really probe and ask some questions. Munster don't have to go mad here, they need to be patient. It is not happy between 15 and 11. What about two? Savat, not the best. Here's O'Leary, very quick. Got a bit high. O'Leary was stooping, and the referee deems. The tackle was OK. Two loss for Servat in a few minutes. Wallace. David Wallace looking for that Wait, offload. And he's got a penalty in front of the post. Reasonable distance, but one that shouldn't worry O'Gara. It might well worry Palouse. Well, these are good moments for Munster, and they're very poor ones for Toulouse. Throw the ball down. I've just seen their try line breached and now Servat's line, his arm is starting to look a little bit shaky. Sowerby doesn't get near that one. And O'Leary, who is very quick, very good at snaffling those opportunities, takes it. And then another penalty. Palouse in with a tackle. Does he roll away? No, he does not. Nigel Owens has no option but to give a penalty there. Well, French rugby knows all about the power of this stadium. Two contrasting experiences in recent times for the French national team and certainly uh, a feeling of Munster power reverberating around this famous ground now. 
vital kick this. We pose the question, would they be able to add? And this is the chance. And it's a chance that has been taken by Ronan O'Gara. Amongst to all this history, but they're absolutely brilliant, aren't they? At living in the moment. To always would think three points is a scant amount for their early dominance. In ten minutes, Munster have turned the screw and they've come away with ten points. Point a minute and it's given them the lead. They've upped the ante and they've come away with points. And in a way better at the restart for Toulouse, they won the ball, but then Elisard had to scurry away from the potential tacklers. John Hayes on the inside there didn't really fill that gap and Human, the South African, went through it. And Medar, just as well it wasn't Medar, had the ball, not Human. Dussetois with that drive forward and Kelleher to Elisard to Josion. That's what Munster must do, hit Josion off his feet quickly. Heymans. And what Toulouse must try and do is snatch something possibly before half time. It would make a great difference for them, both on the scoreboard and in the mind too. Very slow ball here, incredibly slow. Alessard, Josion, Poulouse just being shipped along with no great incisiveness there. Good effort again from Human though. Alessard, Josion. That's nice. Perugini. Has a way No! Didn't really see that ball coming out of the tackle, but it did. Elisar goes wide to Dongi. Howlett lines him up, makes a good tackle. Loving every minute of being part of the Munster story, Dougie Howlett. A really good defence from Munster. What they're doing, they're slowing Toulouse's ball down, and Toulouse are getting a little bit impatient. They're not driving through the forwards, and Elizalde is going very wide very early. They want to go wide, but they have got to commit Munster midfield. If you go wide with those big balls off slow, off slow possession, Howlett's just going to usher Dongi into touch all day, and that was an easy turnover for Munster. Munster are winning the little tactical exchanges at the moment. And there have been many of those. Meanwhile. Jerry Dussetois is being led from the field, he's injured. Yannick Nyanga is on. He's wearing number 19, he's standing in the back line at the moment. Part of that line-out, that defensive line-out for Munster. Half-time nearly upon us in the 2008 Heineken Cup final. The clearance, Donkey didn't hang around there. Heymans, on the right wavelength, those two that time. Heymans, lovely swerve, beats another, beats three now on that run. Just lost. Advantage. It's advantage, Howlett really was uh, being denied the ball by Nyanga on the floor. Uh, I, I think we can see now why Donkey and Heymans were so upset when they both went for the same ball. It's very important for Toulouse that one man takes the kick that goes to touch because of their ability to counter. Heymans fades to go that way, lovely step, and Kunavori can't quite get there. That's the threat of Toulouse on the counter, though. If this was on the other 10-metre line, perhaps Munster would be thinking of something quite adventurous. Maybe still are down this side now, O'Leary with the cautious and probably right call at this stage of the half. A, Keller, a Kelleher-esque decision there, sensible. Sorry? As we go towards half-time, we think to lose first 20, but wrong. Munster have put the points on the board there. They're going forward, their half-backs know what they want to do. There are weaknesses in the That's Toulouse back yes. three. We know that Toulouse will raise the ante at some stage. They'll play in fifth gear, Last they're very day. dangerous, but Munster's fight Four, back please. in the second 20 Gives them a great position, a launch pad to win this final. Great second half in store. Palouse. Hands away now, Rack. Well. Kelleher. Elisar's interested on this side. 
You see now Bassetti. Terrific ball carrier. A tight forward as well, Albacete. Right up there with the very best in the world, but you need to be today. Josie on. Little ball inside from Nyanga to Palouse was excellent, but Dowling's made another top decision. He's done that all season, come off that wing with great effect, but he's not on the wing now, and Hayes realises that and has to smother Heymans. Savat off the floor. Palouse, little reverse ball to Guio. What a fine footballer Palouse is with hand, so comfortable. Here comes al and oh Munster on the wrong side. Well, you know, we said Toulouse would definitely get into fifth gear at some stage in the second half. There were just hints of the reach of fourth gear there with some lovely offloading there. Palouse, we've seen him go one way, then the other, and Munster give the penalty away. And you think this is going to be the last kick of the half. Ellis Ald needs to nail this one. But Palouse, so clever there. Bouillou's not expecting it. But Ellis Ald now is expected to kick these three points. 10-6 half-time, Munster have the lead, but it's right in the balance. Off their feet playing the ball, preventing Toulouse from building what could have been a highly promising attack. Very important okay, kick, you okay. said, for Ogara. And the same applies now for Jean-Baptiste Ellison. It's a long way out for him, although it is fairly central. That will help. And distance was not a problem. LSR gets it there. How important will that three points be? Guino Vez, 15 years at the club in charge, goes into the dressing room to think of another Heineken Cup final half-time team talk. The top two teams in Europe we have. And the Cup finalists have reached half-time with Munster in front by four. The only try as well. Munster 10 to lose six and we've got so much more to come. Tail end of the season and the rugby keeps coming thick and fast for you on Sky Sports. The Premiership final next Saturday live from Twickenham, a repeat of last year's Heineken Cup final. London Wasps against Leicester from 2.30 on Sky Sports 1 and HD1. Then on the Sunday, the final of the county championships again from Twickenham from uh, quarter to 12 on the same channels and that's followed uh, by England against the Barbarians from 2.30. But here at the Millennium Stadium, 10-6 Munster in the final of the 2008 Heineken Cup. Expect there to be nothing left of your fingernails by the end of this one. In fact, you'll probably be down to the knuckle. Let's get back to our match commentators, Stuart Barnes and Miles Harrison. Thanks, Simon. And you can hear the effect there of the Munster supporters. They played their part in the first half, yes, but as this game goes on, the 16th man becomes even more important. Toulouse have been out there for ages waiting for Munster to emerge with Byron Kelleher trying to whip them up but the uh, Munster supporters need to do a bit of whipping up as well don't they? Yeah, Paul O'Connell said at yesterday's pre-match press conference we have to give that crowd something to shout about and in the first 20 it was mainly Toulouse and it was just hope. The second 20 there's a degree of expectation. If O'Connell's men get an early score, they build a lead, this crowd will think again it's their destiny and then Toulouse will have not 16 men but about 50,000 men to beat. Munster desperate for the first score this half. O'Gara starts this second half and well taken by the towering presence of Jean Bouillot. Really is excellent, as we said before at the line out. Also the restarts, but the ultimate is not what he wanted. Well, the initial take by Bouillou is absolutely superb, but then the control from his mates is not that good. Paul O'Connell, you know, has got that big red-headed frame right in the place. Touch. Toulouse didn't want it. The control went. Turnover for Munster. Smart play from the captain. And Dowling's gone across here. Everybody to the right of Leamy. On left wing in position, Leamy, the try scorer, nearly had two in that first half. 
Okay. Is this the calm before the storm? A sex move. No, don't touch now. Now flooding the left side, but Agara switching. Dongi again, slipping this time. He's had problems catching the ball. Now he's got problems with his boots. Just can't quite put it all together, Eve Dongi today. No doubt that Declan Kidney at half time would have highlighted that point. If his players needed telling, that was. Well, that wasn't Ronan O'Gara's best kick, but again, you could see he's isolated an area of weakness as they perceive it. Dongi just a little bit nervous at the moment. And I think O'Gara and O'Connell know that if Doug Howlett could get a one on one with this man, then the New Zealand World Cup eighth might just be the man to win this game for them against Donkey. That's an area at the moment where Munster will fancy their chances. Flannery throws, palmed down by Quinlan. In the midfield oh, and then O'Gara off away. the outside Get of the boot, it. well fielded by Maydar. He's got all the touches, this young lad. Now Hurley in defence, this will be a little test, or will it? No. Still might be, wasn't quite sure whether he carried that ball over or not. And he took no risks. Doug Howlett was on hand with the instruction. Miles. Finals won by inches. Now, two more inches more, and Hurley has no doubt that ball has gone in goal and he can tap it down. He's not certain, he's nervous, and to lose suddenly 12 metres from the Munster line. Medard with a speculative kick from the one youngster, the other youngster not certain of his geography. And Toulouse have been gifted a really easy position from which to attack. Didn't work to get here. So that throws long, it's a beauty as well. It's Wio again. That's a contest off the floor. But it's stolen. O'Connell, the captain, ripping the ball out of the Toulouse grasp and setting a wonderful standard. Charge down. Dowling. Grateful for the ball to fall at his feet. And O'Gara just caught there. And he is calling his players up. I think he's taking responsibility here for the box. He did in the first half, didn't he, in a similar position, and, and we've just seen the charge down. And that was uh, a hundred percenter from O'Leary. He knew what he had to do there. With Wiu, so effective in the air, who gets over the ground this time pretty quickly. O'Gara, very rare that he's caught napping like that. But Dowling does well because he knows as soon as there's the charge down, the ball's in play. He's not offside, even though he's in front of the kicker and he saves the day. He's very strong in those situations, Dowling. What a bonus score that would have been for Toulouse if you think how the position Fred? came about. Well, he's the man of the match in 2006 on the bench today. Try scorer, of course, in that game, Peter Strunk. Scored in the corner in which the action is at the moment, didn't he? So important. O'Connell hauls the ball in in those big hands of his. How about That's two fine That's pieces of work from Paul O'Connell at the start of this second half, it really is. O'Gara, no hint of a charge down that time, and that's a fine clearance kick. Let's go to Yayan on the front line again. Yayan. Yeah, so the type of performance you want from your leader, Paul O'Connell goes straight in on Buio, holds him up in the tackle for long enough that he can rip the ball away, and that's the Munster try line behind him there, rips the ball away, charges upfield, exactly what Munster would have wanted in Campton in 22. Red ball, yeah. he's, he's got a great lieutenant as well, hasn't he? Quinlan rose so high to steal that line out, and then we see Connell. O'Connell stripping ball and then off good attacking ball, carrying, and because of those two, they've taken Munster from the shadow of their try line to 42 metres out. So that, and we are working well again. Enables to lose to launch another attack with Josian. Kelleher is the halfback swap positions. Oh, and the side has no problem with that. Kelleher it. less used to the fly half roll but a pugnacious presence here it's Palouse looking for the handoff and Ianga the replacement for the injured Dussertois almost getting in the way there Josie on again 
We are supported by Albacete. It's off the floor, it's a contest, it's off the floor. Saudi sensing the ball is being turned over, he's getting desperate. That's why. He was right. He's on his feet, he had it up, he's allowed to play it, and he's holding it on afterwards. Off the goal. David Wallace has done superbly there. Started the game against Thierry Doucetois, France's World Cup hero here in the win against New Zealand. He's gone off, but it's still Nyanga on, but Wallace is still doing really well there. Toulouse looking for the soft touches, but the hard battles are being won at the moment by Munster in defence. Epitomises Toulouse, doesn't he, Fabien Toulouse? You just don't expect a man of his size to look for the little offload, the soft hands, but right now Munster are ready for what's coming. Still got that penalty in the end. Flannery. That's Wallace right at the tail. Red card! With Nyanga all over him, but managing to hold on. Ogara. One for Topoki and Nafi to chase. And Haynes screams the mark. Now the ball's screaming. That still won't mind, 10-6 up. He caught the mark, he looked up, and at that time Hurley was very deep, Dowling was deep. He looked left, he looked right, he thought, I can't go too long. Slight hesitation for Heyman's, the slightest of hooks there. And the slice, sl slice, sorry, and Munster back in the Toulouse half. That's from O'Connell. Continues this strong start to the second half, the captain. It's one afternoon, as you see. Talking of power, first it was to Pokey, now it's Maffey. Rachnow, Rachnow! Different sort of power from there. Flannery. Push back. Come back. Well, he's checking, doesn't want to take too long here, O'Leary. Sensing the ball, red sex. goes in to Good help out. Now. His position Check anyway. See, Good. Hands away, red. Hands away. Good. Here comes the crowd. Oh, not going to give up. Loose. Close to offside there, referee gave him a warning, nothing more. O'Connell, O'Leary, tackle from Ellison, never lost his man, never lost sight. Good timing from the crowd. Flannery. O'Leary, Maffey, new to Pokey will be there. Is that forward to Howlett? Yes, it is. Whistle's gone. Howlett's going to be called back. Oh, from his point of view, what a shame that would have been a scintillating finish. I'm not sure the tacklers had heard the whistle, but it's not going to count. Uh, Donica O'Callaghan and Ian Dowling were dancing over the ground of Cardiff as if they just wrapped it up. We're saying to Howlett. Getting some space might be the match winning thing, and it's a tight call here. Beautiful from Maffey and to Pokey. That's forward. It's tight, but tight doesn't matter, it is forward. Well refereed again, but that was lovely play there from Munster. The two Pacific Islanders combined very well. They just flash off their feet, and that time they really got behind to lose. Warning shot, wasn't it, from Howlett? And his centers Jackie kidney final match in charge said that before his return this time though goes to the national position now we have the intervention of the touch judge we should listen I don't know what happened with Quinlan there but all I saw was to lose uh, Fabian Palouse just raised the boot into his leg 
okay? Colusso just kicked him in the back of the leg. Okay. Okay, probably going to bring him out to there. Something probably, probably happened before Something's that, happened yeah? Before. So we're going to deal with that, I'm going to speak to him and I'm going to penalise him. Right. Are you happy with that? No, I'm going to give you a recommendation if you want it. You want a recommendation on that? Yeah. Yes, where is he's, it? He's put the boot out, obviously I don't know what's happened before. Right. Because of the boot, I would say yellow card. Yellow okay, card because the boot. I'm giving. Well, touch judge Nigel Whitehouse has taken Nigel Owens down the route of a card here. We don't know what's happened before, but Dory actually is out of the boot, and it has to be dealt with with what we see. That is what we see. Ten minutes. Thank you, Whitey. Captain's gone for ten minutes. Well, who would have believed it? The veteran, the man around which this Toulouse team build themselves has been yellow carded and Ronan O'Gara has a chance to stretch this lead to seven. Munster with a chance to go seven clear and ten minutes. Well, there's a flick between Quinlan and Palouse and there's a kick up the backside and that is not a yellow card. That is not a yellow card. Well, that man thought so. <laughs> and this is not just a yellow card, it could be three critical points. Well, we might be talking about this call if there's three points in it at the end. Oof. Well, there's three points on the board now, three extra points for Munster. And the bonus of the extra man, and the 16th man. This is the biggest advantage to either side we have had in the game so far now. Seven points up, 15 against 14, and the crowd behind them. And that is a very contentious call from the touch judge there. Ball is loose on the floor, Flannery seems to just go forward off him. Forward off blue. It did, called by the touch judge on this near side, that is Hugh Watkins and Yain Evans is front-lining. Yeah, Munster have been trying to get to poke in, Murphy into the game, Mark, look, and you want an understanding in the centre, right? no look passing, attacked inside shoulder, Front. and who's alongside him is his core centre, and yet another offload again, this time by Tupiki, just going forward, but that sort of empathy, that sort of understanding in the two centres are critical. Kelleher, after Salby came off that scrum, Heymans, when he got it on to Madar, somehow, came with an element of risk from Heymans, but he was prepared to take it, up from Elisard, to lose without their captain, but on the attack, it's Hurley going up again, and he gets helped out by Dowling. That's a great reaction from That's Dowling. Read that beautifully. That high ball has caused Munster problems Number this three, afternoon. Unplayable. I'm not going to the problems over for now. To lose were about to make a change, weren't they? Before Pulus went off, they've put that on the back burner for now. Yeah, well, they've just got to find their shape again. Josion's chased very well all day. This is an acid test now for Toulouse. We talk about their ability to play flow in poetic rugby. Now they have got to hang on him for 10 minutes and they've got to fight their way back into it. We know about Munster's will. We now find out just how much Toulouse want this Heineken Cup. Right now, Munster have the advantage. Stay back, man. Go back. Levy. O'Leary. In the stringer shirt. And the stringer himself would have been proud of that, but Heymans is up and running very quickly and taking his own kick. That's brilliant from Heymans. Now he's chipped again. It's all hands to the pump here. Chipped on once more. And it's going to be an incredible try for Dongi. That is a brilliant score in any game, let alone a final. Toulouse fans have every right to go berserk. Homage to their fullback Cedric Haymans. Yayan said at half time he's always willing to give it a go. Munster thought he was shaping for the high ball, but no, he was going to be more audacious than that. We talk about the fact he's got a driver. Suddenly he finds 
the little chip kick, this is wonderful. First of all, he goes to himself. There's two months to chase us. You don't take it on there. Does he get the slightest deflection? I don't know, but he gets a wonderful pickup. Glorious kick in field. The pressure is on Josie on chase. And Dongi, who's had a traumatic afternoon, benefits. Brilliant play off the left foot. Josion puts the pressure on Ogara and the left wing scores. To lose, we asked about their metal. There's your answer. Alisar with a conversion to level the scores. Flying in the face of the absence of Palouse in the sim mid. Cedric Heymans. What bravado, what style. And Guido Vez watching the glamour boys of European rugby strut their stuff again and strutted in the final two. Beautiful rugby, but the mental hardness to take on that risk and back yourself to do it, admirable. That was absolutely wonderful from the fullback. Supreme fight back from Toulouse there. Kelleher and Elisar combine. That might just check Munster, who thought, OK, patience, build the game, we've got an extra man, let's get a drop goal, let's get a penalty, let's get 13 clear. Suddenly it's level, and to lose, with Buiu rising high again, they feel even with a man down, hey, maybe we've got the force. Time out there, time out. When you talk about psychological signals in matches, what a signal to send with that man off the field. Toulouse prospering. Now here's the change in the front row that was nearly made. There was going to be another, it was going to be a double substitution, but as you say, not with the absence of Palouse, but in the front row, Pooks, Jean Baptiste Pooks, great man to bring on. His fourth Heineken Cup final now. I am not going to ask for Gabs all game. On the line, I put you. Get on the line, please. Free kick says Nigel Owens. Tapped by Dennis Leeming. No one thought this was going to be Back. easy to win, did they? <laughs> Move Whichever way you looked at it. O'Leary. Stay. O'Connor. Leave me again. That was aggressive. O'Connell thought about the pass. Took on Kelleher. Away now! No, no! O'Callaghan. O'Leary. To Pokey. Maffey. Still in the hands. Hands away, Red! They've worked their way through some tight Back. spots this season. Nearly did again. Dowling. Horan. Oh, that's. Terrific stuff from the prop. O'Callaghan. Release. 90 seconds left on the sim bin, by the way. Tackle move. Horan. O'Leary. Dowling little chip. No, that's not worked. Quinlan can't get his man. And suddenly it's all falling into Dongi's lap. by El Asal. This is a test match, a test match I said, it is the intensity of a test match and it's being played right on the knife edge now. Munster will feel they have to come back with something in the next couple of minutes whilst Fabian Toulouse is off. Paul O'Connell is bloodied now, symptomatic of the way Toulouse have just caught, caught Munster with a blow from nowhere. Toulouse reading himself, has had 10 minutes rest now and it's worked out terrifically well for his side. Well here's the Heyman's inspired try, is this the same player that played against London Irish in the semi-final? No, it's the same player who played brilliantly throughout the pool stage though, Miles. And is it the same Josion who played as he did against London Irish, up for it? About to say that, the follow-up from Josion, critical there for Dongi to be able to celebrate. Uh, what I'm impressed with Heyman's as well, he has made one or two errors, but he's had a nervous left wing in Dongi alongside him, and 
He has just played his back three into a comfortable position now. It's all happening with the captains now. Mick O'Driscoll is on to replace Paul O'Connell, who's obviously got to try and stem the flow of that blood. He's in the blood bin. Palouse has been in the sim bin. Ronan O'Gara will take control of the ship, yep. Has to be. Undoubtedly, he was uh, captive when O'Connell was out. Earlier in the pool stages, and this is Nyanga on the retreat initially, but again showing that wiry strength of his. Now the side. O'Leary. Hurley. Taken by Josion. He likes that corner of the Millennium Stadium, doesn't he? Been a lucky corner for him over the past year. Away to Pokey. O'Leary. That's nicely done from Tomas O'Leary, who again has to watch the quick line out. Kunavore. Cedric Haymans, you can't take your eyes off him. He's trying everything now, he feels it's with him today. I'm not sure Maleli Kunavori quite shared his optimism on that particular attack. Kunavori took the safe option and found touch. But Heymans, when he's like this, he is a deadly weapon. <laughs> Sometimes to his own team. But at the moment, the flow, as you say, is with him. But that was, that was a risk. Over the top, Elisar is coming in, and there's space, and Howlett needs to get back and cover it. Down goes Howlett. Elisar just about allowed Howlett back onto his feet there, but... The news for Munster is that there's no hint of a turnover, and it's the half-backs. Drill it downfield through O'Gara. Heyman's going for the long drop goal off that left boot. And Hurley has all the time in the world to make the catch and go for the 22. I suppose with hindsight, Tomas O'Leary will be ruining the fact he hadn't quite put that kick into the crowd, so Heymans couldn't take the quick one. It's very important in the next 20 minutes that Munster start putting a bit more width onto their kicks as Paul O'Connell comes back on. All afternoon, Toulouse have looked dangerous on the counter. They've now really hurt Munster. Ronan O'Gara needs to just take maybe a couple of meters off the length and put it into the crowd so you can't go quickly Time on. Okay, you can go now. Toulouse are going to use the moment of the return of Palouse to make multiple changes it seems there's a number of players stripped off on that far side the uh, reinforcements arriving with the scores level Kelleher Elisard now, is Hurley going to boss this one? No, he's not. Josion is proving to be his nightmare. Kelleher again, stretch from Conavore, tries to straighten. You could see what he was doing. He did have Sowerby and try to score a donkey outside. Drop goal. Long way back to Elisard for the drop goal. No, it's the dummy from Elisard. Well, Munster are out too quickly as well to ever allow it. Now, Callahan is saying, give that ball to me. It's all up in the air and it's all up for grabs. Now it's on the floor. And in goes Maffey with total commitment. How intelligent everyone was there. O'Callaghan robbed Ellis out of the ball. Toulouse realised they'd lost it. They pushed them all towards touch. Munster just threw it down. Toulouse picked it up and then Munster shoved them in. In about five metres of rugby, you saw the speed of mind. Toulouse is back and... We have lost, probably heard Nigel Owen say the numbers. Patricio Albacetti and Jean Guillo have gone and they've been replaced by these impact giants. Roman Miloslowski and Gregory Lambele. Miloslowski's come off the bench in all games in this season's Heineken Cup and Lambele there 22 in because of injury to Valentin Caron, but he played in four of the full games. These are dangerous times for Munster. Toulouse have a great 22, and they are throwing the heavy artillery on 
This is where they try and go through the gears. They will look for the kill here. Munster have got to dig deep here and show the spirit that has made them such a great European team. It's poised now. Into the final quarter now. Leary, the scrum half is back there now. There he is. Heymans, the man with the Midas touch, good hands, Dongi and Nyanga, and here's Nyanga, pushing his way past O'Leary, <laughs> Keller, Elisard, made Oz calling for it, he's got Kunavori with him, Kunavori cuts the line, can he get it inside to show Zion he can, these are desperate tackles now from Munster. Keller out to Elisard, he's going cross field and he's not struck it at all well. And it's Marcus Horan, loves to score on the wing, now he's covering in the wing position. And he's also looking for something a la Cedric Haymans, but not this time, Horan. And there's a penalty after Munster did try something a little bit cheeky through Quinlan. Works. But to lose will be ruining the quality of the kick from John baptiste Elizalde, or should I say the absence of quality. Munster were backpedalling, it was a real chance, and it's a chance gone for Toulouse. And O'Gara will take his time a bit here, let the Munster crowd roar, and get his team back into the Toulouse half. Alan Quinlan again, we know about his physicality, but he's also very quick-witted. He's actually taken that tap, and he's run straight into the Toulouse man, and he's bought a penalty. That's Brilliant play for Tad Cynical. Yeah, he's emptied his pockets there, hasn't he? Oh, yes. <laughs> Marcus Horan, we saw him involved in that attempted runaway. Well, that's his final act for now. He's a specialist prop, of course. We might see him again. Tony Buckley replaces him. Just over 21 stones, one of the heaviest players in the competition, Buckley. Here's Howlett. Hurley. Way red! And Dowling clears Madar out the way. Everything that Dowling's been asked to do today is done well. Some great maturity in his game, as he did a couple of years ago, when he just burst on the scene. Along the line now, the Munster line to O'Connell. All patched up and raring to go for the final push. For a second trophy inside three seasons. Flannery. Advantage. Penalties coming. Advantage. Tosso Leary wants it. Munster weather the storm and they come back with a penalty which not one of those Munster faithful you think Ronan O'Gara will miss. Next issue I have to deal with you. It'll be a yellow then a red. Anybody else yellow? One more penalty of Fabian Pelouse. He's off with a red card. <laughs> well, we've got an awful lot of red here today. And for Palouse, he's on the verge of a tiny little bit more. There's Flannery carrying, and there's Palouse. Penalised for holding on in the tackle. And march forward as well, the penalty to make it. On the line, please, yeah. So, so gettable now for O'Gara. As you said, he probably wasn't going to miss before. Surely won't miss from here. We say that on days like this, of course, all kinds of things can go through the mind. But Ronan O'Gara has proved. Has proved that he is now made for days like these. Fraying tension for Toulouse at the moment. Is it three points for Munster? Yes, it most certainly is. Splashes of blue, yes, but flame red all around. And again, we have scenes that will be scorched on the mind forever, both in the stadium and back home in Munster. Three points the difference. They touched it, but Away, Red. it's so Callahan. 
O'Leary, O'Gara, another charge down. And it's Maffey scrambling on. Back four. To Pokey. Away tackler, Rock. Back please. Nogara taking an extra metre back inside his 22, and that's why Saab is interested. And he's very aware of the law. That will be a to lose throw in. Enough height on that for Ogara to make sure his team didn't get counted. Here he is getting charged down a second time. Again, really great pressure off the ball from Toulouse. Lambole straight in the action there. Big man, he's got ext extremely good reach. It's a long 13 minutes, 30 seconds, if you're from Munster. Or to lose for that matter. Go, go, go. So back to the tail, it is Ogara's though, jumping in. Quinlan sets it back. Flannery. Little incidents like the one we saw there from O'Gara that can make the difference. Hayes. Closing in on Anthony Foley's record of appearances in this competition, John Hayes. There's plenty of experience out there. Limi, the man who took over from Foley. Push back, hey! At eight, that is. This is where Munster are normally at their best. Their ability to retain ball is so good that they can run an awful lot of this clock down. Not all of it, but they can keep the ball out of Toulouse clutches for considerable amounts of time. And build a considerable amount of frustration in the Toulouse ranks. Yeah, and they just hope for one more penalty, sneak further ahead. And there's the big Buckley. Six foot five, tall for a prop, so too Hayes. Very tall men. Hands away now, so that's Snail's pace, which will suit Munster. Around that breakdown now, the injection of genuine pace. The two centres and then Dowling. They burst into life, don't they? O'Leary. O'Gara, O'Connell, a little short pass to his mate, O'Callaghan, in the second row. O'Leary quickly in, some spoiling by Canavori, it's gone forward off him. Matthew trying to take advantage and nothing happening. Maydar thinks that's sufficient advantage, it wasn't a penalty offence. Nigel Owens doesn't agree. Munster had gone back 15 metres or so, I think Medard's optimistic there, and Munster, nothing happened except a minute and a half of the clock has gone, and Toulouse will get more frustrated, there's definitely been sides of them getting agitated, in almost a sense things are going against us, might well have started from the yellow card of Toulouse, but this is Munster doing what they do well, hanging on to it. Halstead came from the Southern Hemisphere and played in the 12 jersey in 2006 for Declan Kidney, Maffey and Topoki, the two centres today. Maffey at 12, Topoki 13, a Topoki, of course, you've seen, stands at inside centre quite often. Stuart, what do you make of that? It's very tight in this half, isn't it? I mean, Munster have had more of the ball and a bit more of the territory, but Toulouse have had the danger areas. And that's just a salutary moment as well, because Toulouse, 12%. They've still got another 12 minutes, they get one more strike in that 22, they can score. Back here 12 years after Toulouse won the first European Cup. Went to extra time that day against Cardiff. Watched by a significantly smaller crowd, 1,800. At maximum today. In every sense. Leamy. Kelleher on the wrong side. Got a strict and stern warning there from referee Owens. 
the Munster really are just trying to take all the heat out of this game and just play keep ball at the moment. Fire one ball to Quinlan and just frustrate to lose. And all the time in the back, maybe in the front of the Munster mind, the knowledge that one more score for them might make the difference. Might put their hands on the trophy. That's brilliant from Wallace. Starting to get within range now. And at this stage of a final, where does that leg power come from? It's slow ball, Ogara's now dropping back into a range for three points. It comes from the heart. And Ogara, there you can see, just loitering with intent. O'Leary will be the man to find him. Four tuck at the top of the sock to get himself ready. O'Leary. Going to set it again. He is. Quinlan. Hands away, Rock. To Pokey. O'Connell. Hands out. Maybe it's not the drop goal. They are. Not looking for Ogara at all, it's Dowling. Who again carries with great effect. Shooting for the match here with a try at this stage of the game. Stay, stay. Howlett. Ogara. It's to Pokey. Stepping. Just couldn't find Wallace. And it's loose. It's knocked on. And to lose. Don't move. They've decided. They'll have a scrum. And we'll all take a pause for a deep breath. Oh, Munster thought the door was opening to uh, another Heineken Cup trophy there with a lovely step from Rui to Pokey. Huge amount of patience, but then when they pick up the pace, they've got these dangerous runners, and O'Connell for once can't quite hold the ball and it goes forward. But, you know, this move started six minutes ago. It's gone through a couple of scrums, it's gone through a series of mauls, and even though O'Connell can't hold it, six minutes depriving to lose of the ball. They are playing a dangerous game of keep ball, but they're playing it very effectively. One more pass to hand there, and look at the heavyweights who are on hand. And the potential, great potential to score. Well, they're, they're on the phone now thinking the Munster fans are saying, we've won it. Very quiet back in to lose. But it was. Lift their team with a message here, but the actual screen in the stadium has broken down at the moment. Donghi breaking down. Donghi broke down the Munster defence, and now he's uh, breaking down and out of the match. So Manu Aho Ta'iloa. The Tongan who scored in the semi-final against London Irish is on. Kelleher, Elisard. It's going to be in, still in with Hurley. Howlett, the experienced man, takes control. Offloads and finds Dowling, who's popping up everywhere. O'Leary, O'Gara. Munster try and take on through the middle. No chance that time. Wallace driven back. Leamy. That was very strong. That's got Munster going again. Elisard oh, trying to rip it. Rolling on and you down. Preventing Wasn't the turnover. Allowed. Penalty Rolling to lose. And he's off his feet, preventing the turnover. Byron Kelleher looked up there and he just thought, do we go? Do we tap and go? But to lose, we'll think. We still have the ability to win this game. They've got seven minutes left. They have to get their line-out functioning again. Servat's got very, very tense under pressure. And they do have the quality, but Munster, if any team can hold on for seven minutes and control the pace of the game, it is Munster. So will it be for Munster one of those agony finals of the old times? Or will it be more joy? Incarnate like in 2006 in that sheet balanced. 
Or will it be a third to lose Heineken Cup final that goes to extra time? They went to extra time against Stad in Edinburgh, didn't they? It was 2005. As I said earlier, that one in 1996, the first one. They, as a club, know all about extra time at this stage. The two finals that have gone. Keep it up, to the extra Keep 20 it up, minutes, 10 Keep minutes each way we'd play. Horan did come back on. Never the greatest shot, the re-emergence of a prop. These are the moments for the big match players and the decision makers now. There's a great drive from the Toulouse pack. And Assad up quickly was O'Gara and Wallace was there as well. You can see Leamy's number eight jersey bending over, trying to turn the ball over, gives it to Wallace and then Quinlan, marvellous work from the back row to Pokey, onto Maffey, little show, this could be absolutely amazing. Oh, Maffey's lost it and he had support either side, right and left. Oh, that was the trophy, you know. Munster have been so cute in the contact, they have turned over to lose this half, David Wallace sorts out Ellis out there, strips him of the ball and then his mate Quinlan on hand and Munster, the broken field they've exploited so well this season with Maffey and Topoki running so well but this time that's a little bit speculative I think perhaps Paul O'Connor would think fine you made the break don't go for 50-50 offloads now you can see there on that replay Howlett gave him the shout I think he was inclined to go left, he wanted to go left, there was support there as well. Howlett knew he would have been under the post had Maffey been able somehow to find him, he couldn't, ifs. Got ball, ball under one hand, you just don't have the option of getting that pass away. But I think it's very important now from Munster's perspective not to throw anything speculative. You know, if it's even near 50-50, you hold on to the ball, you force Toulouse to play. Because Toulouse are probably at their most dangerous from a turnover or uh, an extravagant counter like the one that got them back into the game. Still an awful lot of time left in this final and a lot of rugby to be played. Keller, backwards says the referee. Was a fumble but not a knock-on. In goes O'Callaghan. Munster ball again. Winning the breakdown now. O'Connell. They're burgling their way towards the Heineken Cup. Is O'Gara going to start to think about the drop goal this time? Moving into midfield. The pack doing their work. Also running down the clock, there's the man. Three points, they wouldn't be out of sight, of course, and Munster, over this last ten minutes, this thrilling period of the game, has shown a willingness to go for more. O'Connell, perhaps a little hint of tiredness in that from O'Connell, is entitled to feel it, he really is. David Wallace has been monumental this half. Digging deep. So too Quinlan. Dipping, digging deep to find the richest scene. Look at that clock. Leamy. And listen to this crowd. No rush, no panic. So measured here from Munster. And you can see O'Gara quite flat, quite happy. Little look at the post there. Don't need to go for the drop goal. For 11 minutes, Toulouse have not got anywhere near Munster's half. They're in control. And it hasn't been on O'Gara's mind. 
His positioning has been such. It's coming in field now. Backs are accessories now. Centre stage taken over by the monster pack. Trying to sculpt for a win here, chipping away. It's a penalty. There was always that risk. Kelleher delighted that it's come to an end. But now to lose are not only playing Munster, they're playing the clock. Well, it's been percentage rugby from Munster since Ronan O'Gara kicked them into the lead, and who can blame them? To lose so dangerous when the ball gets a little bit of oxygen with the ball in hand. O'Gara, O'Connell have made sure to lose, haven't had it. This is their first piece of possession in 15 minutes in the Munster half. What Munster would give for a Paul O'Connell, a Donnacher O'Callaghan and Alan Quinlan steal now. The Millennium Stadium rocks once more to the sound of the famous Munster support. A game deciding line out may be taken by Lambelay. Three points for extra time for Toulouse. Savat, Sowerby, lost the ball, turnover, lovely hands there. O'Connell takes Munster over halfway. Wallace gets knocked to the floor, but he played his part as he has done all the way through the game. And what a part. Penalty Munster inside the final minute. It must be. And they know it too. There is no doubt now. Toulouse have given up 10 metres. Josion knows they have given up the game. Ronan O'Gara can take a minute. All he has to do is, he doesn't have to kick this through the post. Kick it dead and it's over. He's checking that with the referee now. The coolness of thought. Clock has stopped. And it's the tap to count down the seconds. Munster, who always know what to do. Into overtime. And it's all over. And it's Munster over that line again. simply could not cross and now the one they have crossed for a second time in three seasons it is time to open up that Cardiff treasure chest again an astonishing performance again because Toulouse had so much firepower but Paul O'Connell, Ronan O'Gara exerted so much control it was a difficult first 20 minutes but when monster had their period they scored the point to lose weren't as effective at turning pressure into points it gave monster a buffer and with that buffer they just about held on to lose will think back to the sin bin and the three points of Toulouse and they will be very upset about that but in the end monster won that because when Toulouse tried to fight back the Munster back row and the Munster pack stole ball. The back row, I thought, were absolutely magnificent. In the second half, David Wallace was brilliant. But Alan Quinlan, who missed out in 2006 from the starting line-out, was superb again. And there goes Declan Kidney to join his team and join the scenes of joy down on the pitch at the Millennium Stadium again for Munster. Kidney the man who showed by his omission of Anthony Foley from the semi-final in Coventry from that 22 and the final here today that he does not do sentiment 
when it comes to selection, but Munster do do sentiment when it comes to Declan Kidney. Hard nosed in the second row. Paul O'Connell was a colossal leader again, but I think my man of the match is Alan Quinlan. He was the man whose brain led the rear guard in the back row. Alan Quinlan is with Graham Simmons. He's my Heineken Cup final man of the match. Graham, over to you. Stuart, thank you very much indeed. Alan Quinlan winning this thing once is pretty special. Winning it twice, how good is that for oh, It's just unbelievable, to be honest. Um, we had to work so hard for it and put it to lose. Um, we had a massive belief coming into this game. I think uh, a few people wrote us off in the last few weeks. Um, but we had unbelievable support from people who believed in us. Uh, especially our families and the supporters and you know personally for me uh, people back home from my town in Tipperary all the well wishes I got and uh, um, support I got back there and all my relations and family it's just unbelievable and I I'd be killed if I didn't give him a mention in Quinlan's pub in Tipperary um, look forward to seeing him all tomorrow and uh, it's just amazing to do it again um, you can hear the singing it's just amazing uh, the crowd gave us a massive lift and uh, you know, as I said, we had to work really, really hard. I think uh, there's a lot of sore bodies and um, it's just an unbelievable effort from everyone. It's a game of inches, Adam, not least in the contract area. Did you feel that's where Munster came out on top today? Yeah, I felt Toulouse had us on the rack in the first 15, 20 minutes. And, you know, we were probably lucky to hold on there without conceding a few more scores. And, um, but the effort out of everyone, not just the 22 guys involved today. I said it several times, we have a massive squad. All the guys who weren't lucky enough to be involved today in Tug Out and all the backroom staff. The, the amount of work that's gone into this is just immense and uh, you know, we love playing in the Heineken Cup and we're very proud to represent Munster and you know, represent Ireland. Um, it's a great achievement for us again and we're just over the moon to be honest. How special for you Alan given you weren't part of the starting lineup two years ago? Yeah, it's unbelievable to be honest. I think uh, coming into the last game, the last time we won it, obviously had a bad injury and just to play uh, more of a part this time is unbelievable, but um, it's just special and I count myself very lucky to be part of this team and to be lucky enough to represent all the other guys and all our families and supporters back home. Alan, you were the Heineken man of the match. This is Carvalho from Heineken is here to present you with your just desserts. Congratulations. Charlene, thank you very much indeed. Paul, this has been some journey. You're in the group of hell with Wasps and with Clermont Auvergne, you're away in the uh, quarterfinals, you're away in the semi-finals, you've beaten Toulouse in the final. Is this almost me more satisfying than the first time around? I think so. Um, I've only played three of the games of this um, campaign, but a lot of the boys have played nine games. A group of, as you say, Clenetli, Wasps, Clermont Auvergne, Gloucester away. You know, they're an incredible bunch of people. I think it's just become an incredible organisation to be involved in Munster at the moment. To see the supporters, it's just an incredible jersey to wear. And you feel a, every time you wear it, you feel a pressure to fill the jersey. You have a commitment to honour to the jersey and it's just, it's making us do special things, it's brilliant. How important was it to you to win this thing again? Not just to win it once, to win it again. I think since, uh, since May 2006, there hasn't been many happy days for a lot of us. It's been a tough European campaign last year, tough World Cup. Even our Kiwi guys had a tough World Cup. <laughs> and uh, it's just incredible now. It's just, it's just a mental strength thing. There's people showing battle and courage. And uh, it's brilliant. There's a trophy waiting for you to collect. Many congratulations for you and your team. Thanks, Graham. Paul O'Connell is yes, the captain this time. And he talked about the tough route, the toughest of them all, really, littered with potential pitfalls. But Munster went even deeper than before. They had to get past Wasps, the European champions, Clermont Auvergne, the French league leaders, the Scarlets, the side who knocked them out last year in their year off, if you like, when it wasn't quite right on the back of the 2006 success. And then, as Paul O'Connor was explaining, to go to English league leaders Gloucester away in the quarter-final that dangerous wild card Saracens in the semi-final and now Europe's biggest name how about that for a way to win the Heineken Cup an incredible journey you know the thing about Munster it's not just individual matches and their ability to pace their way through it it's whole tournaments 
from the moment they came away with a losing bonus point at Wasp, they looked you in the eye and said, OK, we got a point at Wasp, they got to get something at Toman Park. They did the business at home, they came out of an incredibly hard pull, and from there on they went to Gloucester and they overpowered them at the breakdown. The danger was Saracens, they didn't play well, they came through that, and then to beat Toulouse, who are strong contenders to be champion of France, incredible miles, incredible. And some watery eyes in the Munster camp. We saw a shot earlier of Jim Williams. He's going to Australia, of course, at the end of all of this. Declan Kidney goes to Ireland. So it will be a period of change. But what a way for it to end, this chapter, this particular chapter, if you like, for Munster Rugby. I just think uh, Declan Kidney has done a wonderful job. He's such a fine strategist. And, and you mentioned Jim Williams, the former, there's Jim Williams, tears in his eye. He played for Munster, he changed them, he turned them from being a passionate team to a really intelligent team, and it's rubbed off on men like Quinn. Williams had a big role to play. And Stuart, your choice of Heineken Cup final man of the match and how good would that sound to Alan Quinlan, although he will put it in perspective, he's a team man, team man through and through, but it will sound good because he missed out on the start against Spirits in 2006, he's certainly not missed the boat today, he was on at the end of course of that match, on from the first whistle today. Fabian Palouse, well he's not going to be Let's the first man Fabian to lift the Heineken Cup Hasta three times, Luda! that record could have been his overtaking Two giants of the English game, Martin Johnson and Lawrence Delalio. And a little sorrowful look from Palouse at the trophy. It's always cruel on the losing side, not just to get the medal that they didn't want and the box that they don't want to open, but also to have to file past that trophy now. That is agony, isn't it? Yeah, and, and Toulouse will think the reason they lost, they couldn't get enough quick ball. So much brilliant counter-attack in the Heyman's creation of the try. Brilliant but they were forced to play on the back foot and it was Munster's strength at the contact it was Munster's cleverness and ability to turn over and a Munster line-out that didn't falter that made the difference when they made their point in Clermont Auvergne quite literally Munster showed to Europe that they were ready again that was arguably the most gutsy club or provincial performance of the season in a season blessed by many of them but my goodness Today will take some beating now for guts. So here we have it, two in three years after all those years of nearness. So a little pause there for Munster's moment, and what a way to do it as well. This season, Munster have arrived at this point, as we say, after the most difficult journey imaginable, plotting away to this moment. Cardiff, once the scene of despair for Munster fans, the hand of Neil Back is now long forgotten. And it will be the hands of Paul O'Connell that matter when he gets his hands on the trophy. I wonder where Declan Kidney will be. He'll want it to be the team's moment, no doubt about that. 2006, Anthony Foley, then captain, said, when we won it, this is not, he said to his team, we are not ending our journey, we are starting it. The journey goes on. It is not complete from a month of perspective, but they have lifted it again. It goes on. Rodan O'Gara, who has led the side with distinction. The Heineken Cup! And Paul O'Connell. 2008 champion! The 
this has become for Munster a very special place. And Munster! the Heineken Cup is in safe hands. interview with Graham about the hurt since 2006 or 2008 what a year now for Munster and what a year in store European champions and they will play the All Blacks in November to celebrate the new look stadium everything in place and it seems the whole of Munster here in Cardiff again to see it Stand up and fight. They've certainly done that. So what an incredible effort by Munster. Tears again, a similar reaction to when they won it for the first time. It means so much. 2006 was the threshold. 2008 backs up the fact that this team is a hard-nosed European giant, totally deserved. They bullied Toulouse in the second half and Munster are the Heineken Cup champions once more. So we're just about done for the season in the Northern Hemisphere. Just the Challenge Cup tomorrow, the Guinness Premiership final in the Barbars next weekend before the start of a packed summer of rugby south of the equator.